Hi guys, Nada here and welcome to yet another GPU release because we obviously did not have enough of those this year. Today I'm going to talk about the brand new card from AMD, their new budget card which is the Radeon RX 5500 XT that I have right here. Now, uh, this card is supposed to be the new 1080p King and it's not to be confused with the 5500 non-XT which can only be found in some OEM systems like Dell and HP etc. You cannot actually purchase it separately. Uh, now there isn't going to be a reference card but we got a card from Sapphire and from Asus here. This one has 4GB of memory, this one has 8 so we're going to do tests with both and see how do they compare to each other as well as how does this chip compare to some of the other graphics cards especially its main competitor the 1650 super from nvidia that has been released recently we also received one more card but i cannot actually talk about it and include it in this video because some silly nda rules but i can actually go to the store and purchase it today so i just might go and do that and yeah there might be a new review very very soon so let's talk about the performance of these two first let's talk about some thermals noise and all those fun little graphs that you guys love so much Let's go. This video is brought to you by the Corsair IQ465X RGB case that offers solid performance but also a lot of RGB as it comes with three LL120 addressable RGB fans and an RGB controller by default. Check it out using the links in the description below. You guys probably heard some rumors already about this 5500 XT, so you already know it's a 7 nanometer card with an RDNA architecture and it was actually engineered to fit a specific group of people and that is gamers that game on 1080p monitors and don't want to spend more than 200 euros or 200 dollars on their graphics card. So this is pretty much a direct competitor to the 1650 Super from Nvidia that has also been released recently and also is quite cheap. Now, at the end of the day what gamers most mostly care about is just pure performance. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. So obviously we're looking at the GTX 1650 Super here as the main competitor, but we're also going to keep an eye on the difference between the 4 GB and the 8 GB card performance. Compared to the GTX 1650 Super, both RX 5500 XT cards are consistently a couple of percent faster, both in bigger titles as well as high FPS titles, with the GTX 1650 Super only really winning one game. AMD's RDNA technology has clearly matured a bit as the differences between the cards are very consistent and that is comparing to the 5700 XT launch where some titles would favor AMD or Nvidia more heavily. Now obviously some titles still favor one over the other but the RX 5500 XT is consistently a bit faster. And this is really not a bad place to be performance wise. These results mean that the RX 5500 XT can basically handle every big game, assuming you're fine with not getting ultra settings in all of them, but also it will do really well with fast monitors in popular esports games. Now between the 4GB and the 8GB card, it is important to note that these two cards have almost identical clock speeds, so the only real difference is the amount of memory. While we see significant difference in some games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, especially on higher settings, there is zero benefit in many other games. So in theory the 8GB one should age better with future titles, but I have to point out that the RX 5500 XT doesn't really have a ton of headroom in terms of performance. So by the time the 8GB will actually make an impact, you might want to replace any 5500 XT out there. So if you're really worried about 4GB not being enough, which you shouldn't be, a 6GB and overall faster GTX 1660 Super is probably a safer investment. One thing that's subjectively great is the power consumption of this card, which is on par with the 1650 Super. For years when buying budget AMD cards, you had to consider a higher power cost of running one. But now with the RX 5500 XT versus the 1650 Super, you only pretty much need to look at a price at the time of purchase. So assuming the price is right, the RX 5500 XT should make for a nice entry-level GPU. Now the question of course is which one? I expect I'll be testing a lot of different models in the coming weeks and I will be making an in-depth comparison video, but I do want to at least set a baseline with these two cards, so the Sapphire Pulse and the Asus Dual, and both of these cards are actually quite close to AMD's MSRP. 
The Aces Duel is a very nice, neutral looking dual fan card. It is not over the top ROG, but I do think it looks good for a budget card with a nice back plate and a decent overall design. There is no RGB or nothing extra in terms of features, but that is what should make the duo cheaper than the ROG Strix model, which will come later. The Sapphire Pulse is a bit smaller, it is noticeably lighter and has a bit more going on design-wise. Especially the backplate, it has some details that the Asus card doesn't, but it still should be easy enough to match with most other parts in your PC. For a budget card, I found it surprising to see a dual BIOS switch. Unlike some other cards, these two BIOS versions don't seem to do anything different really, so they don't work like the Quiet or the OC mode. Instead, they simply seem like a tool for modders and overclockers. As I showed before, the clock speed differences between these two cards are basically zero. Their power consumption is also about the same, so it all comes down to thermals and noise. With both cards averaging at 66 degrees Celsius, it should come as no surprise that the slightly beefier Asus card manages to be a little bit quieter. But honestly, the Sapphire card is also far from being loud, thanks to the really low power consumption of the 5500 XT chip. So let's conclude. This is by every standard an excellent all-around entry-level GPU, especially if you're on a bit of an older card, you can make a big jump in both performance and efficiency for a reasonable price. You'll be able to play every game comfortably on 1080p, just don't consider it for serious Quad HD gaming, cause you will want to invest a bit more for that. The 4GB model will be 169 US dollars and the 8GB model will be 199 US dollars, which is in line with my expectations. Either way, what I can tell you right now is to just keep an eye out on the pricing in your region because it might vary a lot and that can decide what you're gonna go for. I would say that 5500 XT does perform a tiny bit better than the 1650 Super, uh, so if the price is up around $10 or euros more, that is quite reasonable. Or if the price of the 5500 uh, XT 8GB version ends up being $30 more expensive, that is still reasonable. Just make sure the price doesn't go too high and too close to the 1660 Super, because then you should just go for the 1660 Super, that will be a straight performance upgrade. When it comes to these two cards, the Sapphire and the Asus, I have to say they're actually quite similar in everything. So they perform the same, uh, they stay cool, they make no noise. And uh, I have to say the Asus is a bit sturdier and has a bit better build quality, a bit beefier. But at the end of the day, if you're choosing between these two, just pick one that you like more or is cheaper in your region. Now. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this review and about this new 5500 XT and about silly AMD NDAs. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you next one. Bye.